that concept that infinities are part of the boundary of your existence. That is, viewed from this perspective, everything can be divided to infinity. Okay? And, well, if, if, if physics communities understood this, first of all, right away, they would alter their accelerators projects. Meaning, currently, you know, we thought when we discovered the cells, we thought the cells were the smallest thing. And then we discovered the atom, and then we thought, oh my God, that's so small. You know, there's billions of atoms in every cell. That's got to be the smallest thing. And then they discovered the electron, and then they discovered the protons, and then the cores. Every time they go, oh my God, that's got to be fundamental. That can't be anything smaller, right? And now we're trying to find the X boson. I mean, the accelerator has to get bigger every time, all right? And so now the accelerator, which is pretty well the biggest accelerator we ever be able to build, and that means that we've reached the end of our capacity to go smaller, okay, is the hydron uh, collider that's being built in uh, Switzerland. It's miles long, it costs $300 billion, five countries had to get together to pay for the bill, and, uh, and now we're looking for the hydron, which is like billions of times smaller than an atom. What are we doing? We're dividing the space. I mean, we're dividing space at that point, no doubt. And uh, guess what? You can keep dividing, right? You can, we did the same thing in the other direction. We thought our planet was the biggest thing in the universe. And then we thought we found the, the solar system. Oh, my God. And then we found the galaxy. And then we thought we were the only galaxy. And then we found all these other galaxies. And we found super clusters of galaxies. And then, you know, and then universe. And then, and now we think the universe is the biggest thing. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> that universe could be embedded in a larger one, in a larger one, in a larger one, and so on. So, you know, instead of looking for a fundamental particle or looking for a fundamental universe, maybe we should start looking, and that's what I did at that time, for a fundamental pattern of creation, a fundamental pattern of division that define creation. So in my day-long seminar, I'll be able to show you uh, scaling mapping that we did with uh, observation and equations we wrote that shows that, you know, dimensions are actually, you know, concentric to each other, but as well um, that, um, that the division of space undergoes very specific relationships to each other that defines the geometry of space, that defines how space divides and what scale gets produced at which level. It's not a random thing. <laughs> and so that is the key because if we understand, forget the fundamental particle, if we understand the fundamental division of creation, if we understand the fundamental geometry of creation, now we have the key to some of the most powerful information one can have in the universe the foundation of creation, okay? Interestingly, if you look at various tradition, Kabbalistic, Hindu tradition, all these traditions talk about geometry being fundamental to the structure of creation, and, and if we could decode it, we would have this power. What it means to you right now, though, is that instead of thinking of dimensions as planes overlaying each other, <laughs> and things like that, is that to think of yourself as an infinite potential in every single atom that you're made of, right?